and it will bring in the star of the next step, which is the PS RAM chip. So yep, it's pretty small. And I'd even recommend getting your tweezers out to break into the packaging so that the thing doesn't go flying before you've even got it securely gripped in tweezers. Just dig around to get that little plastic cover off, tip it out, set aside the rubbish, and now it's upside down. But I just want to show you when I bring the tip of the soldering iron in, all we've really got to do is get a tiny bit of heat and solder, whoop, burning my cutting mat now, um, tiny bit of solder and heat onto each of those pins. So there's enough space between them to do that successfully, even with this basic hobby soldering iron. I'll show you why I like these particular tweezers, because once you've got a grip on something, that's it. It's not letting go. It's going to hold that nice and steady for us to get started. The other thing you've got to pay particular attention to with this small component is that in one corner in the top plastic surface, and it's probably really hard to see this on the camera, there's a little dimple. It's a little indentation, a little circular indentation in the plastic molding. That indicates pin one. And when I bring the circuit board back into view, And if you have a look just here at the pads for the PS RAM chip, there's a little white dot right in, on the inside of pin one. So you need to get that dot and the little plastic indentation on the chip lined up so that you've got the chip oriented correctly. If you put it in back to front, you'll then face the frustration of having to take it off and try again. So how do we go about doing this surface mount soldering. Well, really like putting in any larger piece that's got multiple pins. The trick is to tack it down on two opposite corners. Make sure you've got your flux pen, pen handy. This one needs a little bit of a shape, like a, like a can of spray paint. And I think it uses a bit of a press um, just to get flux flowing when you're ready to use it. But we don't need any just yet. The first thing we're gonna do is using an absolutely minimum amount of solder, we're just gonna get a little bit of solder on the pad for pin one. So heat on the pad, a touch of solder. There's just now the smallest little pillow of solder sitting on top of that pad. And we're gonna do the same in the opposite corner here, down near the U13 label. Now, if at this point you're already creating solder bridges between pads, then maybe you've got to rethink what soldering iron you're using or what your technique is like. Because that should have just been the lightest dab of solder and shouldn't be enough to be bridging between pads. If you've done that already, that's when the solder wick will come in handy because you can now just go and start soaking the solder back off the circuit board and getting rid of it. At this point, I don't want any excess solder left on my iron, so I'm just off camera cleaning the tip completely free of any extra solder. And then I bring in the surface mount component. Now I'm gonna start with this bottom corner that's more accessible from this angle. And all I need to do is get the ch chip in about the right place and just apply a little bit of heat on that pad and you'll feel the IC just relax down onto the circuit board and that's it. That pin is soldered. If I remove my tweezers, you might notice that the chip can just be pivoted around a little bit because it's only held by that one corner. So I can just push it into place to get the other opposite corner completely lined up. Just a bit of pressure with my thumb or finger now so it doesn't move again. And a tiny bit of heat on the opposite corner. 
and that just reflows the solder that we placed on that pad. So we've now got the two opposite corners soldered down and that PS RAM chip isn't going anywhere. But now we've got the job of soldering it in place. This is where the flux comes in. You want to get that flux pen out, shake it up, make sure it's ready to flow. And now just work on one side at a time. Don't try and do it all at once. It's just going to take a few presses and you may not have seen it on the camera, but I just saw a little puddle of flux flow all around that IC. So now the PS RAM chip is sitting in a little puddle of flux. The reason why you want to use that liquid flux is you're going to pre-tin or get solder on the tip of the iron. Don't load it up too much, just a little bubble of solder floating on the end of the iron. And now just coming in uh, perpendicular to the IC on each leg that hasn't yet been soldered, just touch down and you'll see the solder flow, uh, the solder flow onto the pin. You'll see some of the flux burning off. But I can see I've got nice shiny uh, legs on that chip. I'm just going to redo the one at the end here that we did first. So they all look pretty even. So it's that simple. Just with the solder sitting on the iron and the flux flowing around the IC is enough to get the solder to go exactly where it needs to be. And the solder mask on the PCB is going to stop the solder going where you don't want it. A little more flux just to make sure it hasn't evaporated or disappeared. Again, just look at how much solder is on the tip. There's almost nothing there now. And I'm just putting the smallest amount on the tip and working my way down the legs on the other side. And you can see I don't have the steadiest hand, but it's good enough to get this job done. And you can just go back and do them again and again until it looks just right. Now, hopefully you noticed just how little solder I used. It's not a job where you want a lot of solder in the way. It's just going to create bridges between the pads. And if you do that, then the only recourse is to use the solder wick to soak it up. So this is one of the few times where I'll break out the isopropyl alcohol. I'll just give a little bit of a spray. I'll even get out my conductive brush and give it a little scrub. But the flux that comes out of the pen isn't gummy and it doesn't sort of build up. And now it's time for one of the uh, cotton buds and we just dry up that isopropyl alcohol and the salt and the flux that it's uh, dissolved. Bit of a blow and that'll help the uh, alcohol evaporate. So there it is, not too hard. It's really useful at this point to check that the, we've got the continuity we're looking for. And I will put some written instructions about this on the website so you know what the uh, pin numbers are to go check in. This is one of the few times when having a digital multimeter is useful. And it's not that important to see what's on the screen because I'm actually just going to put it in. This one has a mode where it just beeps out when it's got continuity. So if we have contact, you can hear the beep. So I'm just going to go around with one of the probes uh, going past each leg right at the top so it's away from the circuit board and it's right where the leg actually enters the plastic packaging of the IC and then I'm going to look for a corresponding pad somewhere else on the circuit where I can check for continuity. So starting on pin 1, I know that pin 1 comes straight off this resistor R14 so I can check from the end of that pad the pad on the resistor, and there we go, 
I've got continuity. So I'm pretty confident that that pin is soldered down well. The next one, pin two, actually comes from uh, this opposite corner of the ESP32 and one pad in from the end. So that one follows along here, disappears in underneath and crosses to the other side. Excellent continuity on that one. The third one you can see, pin three, is coming from the second pad on this side. Great, we've got continuity. And the last pad is the ground, and there are grounds all over the place. Uh, we could pick up a ground from over here on the SD card socket. Great, so we know this side's all well soldered down. Working our way up the other side, this bottom pin, now I'm just struggling to remember where this one comes from. Um, pretty sure that this is the trace coming off this top corner here. It disappears underneath and crosses over down there. So let's try that. Yes, continuity. The next pin, six, is the one you can see tracing through the shielding all the way back here. And then the next one's really close and obvious. So uh, just try and do this in a way that you can see where it's coming from. Pin seven comes from just over here. The third pad in from the end of the ESP32 mounting. And then the final pin eight is the power. And again, that comes from the other end of the resistor or the capacitor. So we've got continuity on all those eight pads. And I'm really pleased with how uh, that PSRAM chip is soldered in. So that one's definitely the easier of the two because there is enough space between those um, legs to get the job done, just bringing the soldering iron in perpendicular to the side of the IC.